Hi, everybody. Good, I think it's afternoon now. Good afternoon. Um, so we're just going to go through some basic threat modeling. And I know that this is probably basic for some people, um, probably lots of folks here. Uh, but we're just going to go through this. Uh, we have handouts about threat modeling that are on the uh, table over there with the EFF shirts, which, by the way, um, please feel free to grab a shirt. I also put some of the handouts right here um, on one of these chairs up here. Uh, so my name is Nadia, I'm an activist with Electronic Frontier Foundation, and surveillance self-defense is one of the things that I do, I work on some of the tools that we have, and I teach people surveillance self-defense, and usually what we do is just start by going through threat modeling, which is what we're going to do today. Yeah. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Nate Cardoso, I'm a staff attorney at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. I do litigation on privacy and free speech, uh, and I am... Uh, Chief lawyer on the case, on EFF's first case, uh, about malware. So threat modeling is something uh, very close to my heart. Oops, sorry. That's right. So of course, uh, we have to give the disclaimer, which is this isn't legal advice, and they are our opinions. So uh, hopefully, they will be helpful, though. So uh, threat modeling is the way, the way that you can approach security for yourself without having to think about everything all at once. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to figure out what it is that you need to be concerned about. And you want to do it by starting by asking yourself these questions. What do you want to protect? Who do you want to pre protect that stuff from? How likely is it that you're going to need to protect it? How bad will it be for you and for the people that you love and care about if you fail to protect it? And how much trouble are you willing to go to to prevent that from happening? So what do you want to protect? Um, we always start with this and think about what sort of information or files, things like that, we would want to protect. Um, so usually I like to try to shout out to the audience to see if anybody has any ideas. Um, it's a little bit loud here for that. So uh, I think we'll just go through the slides and then um, definitely if you want to, if you want to shout things out as we're going through them, please feel free. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, so before I get to the next slide that lists what sort of things you would want to protect, does anybody have any ideas? What sort of thing? What's important? What's important in your life that you don't want falling into the wrong hands? Money. money. That's right, money. What else? Your identity. Your identity. The what? note that the kid passed you in school who you have a crush on, right? You want to keep that secret. You don't want the teacher or your friends or your mom to know about it. What else? Well, that, that's, a good, that's a good start. Um, so location, um, who you're talking to, that's sort of what, what Nate was thinking about. Like, who are you talking to? What do you talk to them about? Uh, you don't necessarily want your teacher knowing every single conversation that you're having with your friends. Um, text messages, phone calls, instant messages, um, files on your computer, so like photos that you took that you stored on your computer, um, anything like that. So who do you want to protect that stuff from? I think we started naming some people, but anybody else got any ideas? Who do you want to protect any of those things that we just listed from? Who do you want to protect your money from? Criminals. Great. Anything else? Anyone else? Spies. 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 Maybe people who could get you in trouble. That's right. So school administrators, um, future employers, uh, unfortunately, these days, in 10 or 15 years, you might have people looking your name up and looking for you know, things that you posted online. Um, people you used to be friends with, like maybe you sent a really you know, personal text message to somebody and you're worried about that getting out now. Um, people who might just Google your name, corporations, uh, all, all these things are th people that you might want to think about. So um, this picture, I had to include this um, because how many people have ever heard of like tracking, tracking apps that people can put on your phone, right? So this, this is a good example. Life360 is one of the most popular. Um, and as you can tell, um, if it's on your phone, people it, it can actually just alert people. Like whoever installed it on your phone, it can alert them wherever you go. So it, it, it's hooked into your GPS location information. And it can say, OK, you showed up at school at this time. And it will actually send an alert to people. Um, 
How many people here have heard of Hello uh, Barbie? Yeah? Okay, if you haven't heard about it, this is super creepy. This is a Wi-Fi enabled Barbie um, that you can talk to and she'll talk back to you. The way she talks back to you is that she sends what you're saying to her um, to a server and the server thinks about what you said and then sends you a response. Um, so it's not just, so it's actually recording what you're saying, um, it's Wi-Fi enabled and it's storing what you're saying. Super creepy. So, <laughs> let's just, really super creepy. <laughs> so how likely do you think it is gonna be that you'll need to protect it? So we don't have any pictures here because this is a question that really requires that you just think about your own personal situation. And I will say, uh, especially for kids who are at Roots, um, you know, depending on what kind of work your parents do, that you might want to think about that in terms of how likely it is that you need to protect something. Um, so it's not just about you, it's about the people that you know and why people might want to get information about them or about you. Um, if your mom is a spy, you might need to protect your stuff more carefully than if she wasn't, for instance. Or if your mom, uh, you know, is a security professional, or if uh, there's all sorts of reasons why um, the people that you know might affect how likely it is that you're going to need to protect something. Or if your dad's in the mafia, for instance. <laughs> you know, just in case. <laughs> yeah. So this question thinks about what could happen if you don't have good security and privacy. So how bad will it be for you and the people you love if you fail to protect the things that we talked about? Um, so, you know, of course, it could range from being embarrassed. Um, somebody gets a picture of you and like puts it on Instagram and, and it's an embarrassing picture um, to, you know, your money get, getting stolen if, if uh, for some reason you didn't protect that information. Um, to if you're responsible for taking care of your parents and your money gets stolen, so it's not just you, it's also your parents who are out of luck. That's right, and you know, of course, if you're sharing computers or if you're sharing devices, um, your parents' information could be on there too. Uh, so credit card information, financial information, things like that um, definitely could be a problem. So the last question, and this is, this is how you help decide what you're going to do and what kind of steps you're going to take for your own security, is how much trouble are you willing to go to to prevent those consequences. So for instance, uh, you know, if you uh, are texting your friends a lot and you decide that you want to start using encrypted and, and encrypted text messaging so that uh, your text message is more secure, a lot of your friends are probably going to be like, Signal, what's that? I don't, I don't really want to put that app on my phone. So that can be really annoying. Um, on the other hand, it might be a really good idea for you to do that, and you might want to try to convince them to do that. So um, EFF has a website, Surveillance Self-Defense, and this is where a lot of this stuff is coming from, including threat modeling is on there. And we have lots of tools that you can learn on Surveillance Self-Defense. Um, Encrypted email, calling, chat, uh, and texting tools. So text cure and signal that I was just mentioning. Um, but also you can learn how to make encrypted phone calls. Um, you can learn how to do encrypted uh, end to end encrypted chat um, and lots of other tools. Uh, how to create good passwords and manage them with a password manager because it's pretty much impossible to memorize your passwords if you're going to be using secure passwords. Um, how to delete your data securely encrypting your phone and your hard drive, how to use Tor, and lots of other things. Can I talk about encryption? I'll bet that everybody here knows what encryption is, but just in case. So of course, it's incredibly important um, all the time. And the reason we put question marks for email, search engines, donation websites, and browsing is because not all of those uh, places are going to be using encryption, and we, we think that they should, of course. Passwords. I'll talk about passwords if that's yes, okay. Yes, please do. So passwords uh, are incredibly important. Obviously, everything you do online uh, is dependent on some sort of access control, right? If I'm using email, how does, it, how does Gmail know it's me? They know it's me because I typed in my password and I'm the only person who knows it. Uh, so passwords lock everything we do and keep everything we do at least the tiniest bit safe. Uh, who here knows what two-factor authentication is? Okay, two-factor authentication is awesome and you should all be using it. Uh, oftentimes websites, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google, will give you the option of putting in a mobile phone number as well as your password. And when you log on to a device for the first time, uh, log on from a device for the first time, 
Google doesn't just ask you for your password, it also sends you a text message with a four-digit code that you have to type in. The theory here is that only you have both your phone, which just received that text message, and knowledge of your password. So unless someone steals your phone and figures out your password, they can't get into your, uh, your Facebook account or your Twitter account or your Instagram account. So two-factor authentication helps you from getting hacked, even if your password is compromised. But there are a lot of things you can do to keep your passwords from being compromised. Uh, one of the biggest ones is don't use the same password for any two services. Every password you have should be unique. Um, and that can be a pain, right? It's not easy to remember 5, 10, 50, 100 different passwords. Uh, and that's why we recommend using a password safe. Uh, there are a few out there, LastPass, OnePass, uh, that have very, very good uh, encryption and, and, and password management. They're not that hard to use. Um, I've, I've gotten everybody in my family using it. Uh, and and we, we totally recommend it. And most of the solutions out there are free. All that requires uh, is that you memorize one really strong password. Uh, strong passwords should be unique, very long, and randomized in some way. Uh, it could be an alphanumeric string. It could be a string of random words that don't actually make any sense to anyone but you. Uh, it, it could be something completely different. Um, but the longer, the better. Uh, and it should be randomized in some way. It, it shouldn't be uh, you know, the, the opening line uh, of Harry Potter. That one's, that, one's, that one's taken, put it that way. <laughs> Uh, so one of the things that's always important to keep in mind is beware of password recovery questions. So unfortunately, almost every website out there, um, every big website has some sort of password recovery question system. Um, and how many people have been watching any of the capture the flag stuff, right? There was, and there was, I think there was a capture the flag, uh, the social engineering um, capture the flag. I mean, I think there was social engineering capture the flag for kids too. Uh, so there's all sorts of ways you can figure out the answers to people's password recovery questions. Uh, sometimes just a, a quick Google search on their name <laughs> is enough. Um, but you know, you can also, if it's somebody you know, you can probably get that information. So that can also happen to you. And that's why we always say beware of password recovery questions because it's, it's pretty easy to find the answers to almost all of those commonly used questions. So I already mentioned, uh, surveillance self-defense. Um, this was just like, we're just quickly going through threat modeling because it's the place to start, but uh, all those tools that we talked about are available on the, on the website, the ssd.eff.org. Um, and you know, you're in a great place if you want to work on your security and you want to think about what tools to use and you want to learn those tools, this is the best place to be. Um, we probably should have specifically mentioned Roots on there. Hackerspaces, crypto parties, uh, our website, but also places like this are a great way to learn what tools you're going to need to use once you've done your own threat model. So. Thanks. That is it.